Adam Weiner here on behalf of Stacking the Box. I am here with Spice Adams, uh, internet legend and former NFL and college player who is partnered with Frosted Flakes ahead of the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl between Notre Dame and Oregon State. Uh, Spice, thanks so much for joining me. Tell me a little bit more about how the partnership came to be and what your game day schedule is going to look like that day and heading into the showdown. Well, I like to have fun. I like to have a good time. And so does Kellogg's Frosted Flakes and Tony the Tiger. So I'm excited to have a lot of fun at the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl out in El Paso. And um, I think it's, it's it's a great thing that they're doing. They have uh, Mission Tiger, where they're giving uh, $30,000 to uh, El Paso's Eastwood Middle School. And so they're going to provide students with uh, sports uniforms and fitness equipment and things like that. And where Tony the Tiger and I come in at is after the first quarter, Tony the Tiger and myself, we're going to go out, throw the picks, skin around. We're going to have a lot of fun with the kids and uh, it's going to be really interactive. And then halftime, we're going to go out and throw footballs into a bowl or something like that. We're going to have a little competition. And if you can't be there, then follow me on Instagram and, um, you know, I'll, I'll fill you in with the details so that you can be a part of it if you can't be there. So i um, looking forward to it, man. It's going to be a great time. Uh, Notre Dame, Oregon State, can't wait. It's going to be a good game. Some of these bowl sponsorships are getting really wild with what they do with a celebration. Yeah, the didn't, didn't Gronk have one? Like Gronk got a, yeah. I saw like creamy <laughs> coffees doing stuff yesterday. Somebody poured coffee all over the winning coach. Do you Do you like have plans? <laughs> For celebrating with the winning coach, are we going to douse him in cereal milk? Tony the Tiger scares him in a dark room. Like, what do we got planned? You know what is everything's going to be spontaneous. You know what I mean. So if something calls for somebody to have some frosted flakes on them, then let's do it, man. It's, it's all let's have fun, man. So uh, looking forward to it, man. Whatever it is, whatever they throw our way, we're going to make do with it. Okay, great. We'll stay ready uh, from a viewer's perspective. Yeah, we got to get like some 2% milk or something, like something organic or something like that. <laughs> it's it's better for you. You think it's better if it's organic? Like if you get wet, That's you're what like, they say. oh, yeah, it's healthy though. Yeah. <laughs> Good to hear. Good to hear. Um, the game itself on the field, Notre Dame, Oregon State, this is Oregon State's last bowl in the Pac-12 as we know it. Has mm. that sunk in yet for you? How do you feel about all this weird realignment that's coming? You know what? I think uh, if you're a player, then you just control what you can control. You know, you can't control what conference you're going to. The only thing you can control is your attitude and your play and your leadership abilities and things like that. So you just kind of let that stuff, you know, you let the chips fall where they may and you just make the most out of the situation. Um, I, I'm you know, sure that Oregon State has a lot of uh, great traditions that they're going to continue to follow. I don't think the fact that they're going to a different conference is going to change anything when it comes to the traditions that they uphold. And um, I think, um, you know, whatever conference that they go to, they're going to they, they're going to have fun doing it. All, mm -hmm. all, all of these schools, because it's not just Oregon State. Yeah, it's it's all going to be sort of this new world next year. Um, yeah. And heading into it, I mean, you can tell, I'm sure you've been following, you know, the pulse of the fans going into this one. Do you have a sense of which fan base between Oregon State and Notre Dame is sort of going to take over El Paso? Like, where are you seeing most of the buzz on your social media this week? Well, being as though since I live in Illinois, like Notre Dame is right there. And, um, you know, I, I got a lot of my teammates and a lot of locals around here that are, they're, they're excited about the game. So that's all you see. Like if I go to the, to the store, I'll see Notre Dame gear for sale. So it's going to be hard for me uh, to go against Notre Dame because that's that's all I see. And that's all everybody talk about is it's getting to the point where they almost like Dallas Cowboy fans at this point. Have you have you ever encountered a Dallas Cowboy fan? Yeah, from, from that's what I'm saying. Time. And you 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 never forget it. It's almost the same with Notre Dame fans, man. It's it's getting to that point. I, I hate to say it, but it's getting to that point. Does that bother you as a Penn State guy, or are you like willing to accept it? Nah, man. To me, like it's a it's a kid's game. You know what I'm saying? Like football is a kid's game, man. If, if that wasn't the case, then you wouldn't. A lot of people can't say, well, I played football since I was three. Like, because a kid can play it. You know what I mean? So I don't, I think it's all fun and games, man. You At the end of the day, you still got to line up. 
you still got to line up. You still got to play four quarters. So, I mean, a lot of people that's talking the most trash can't go out there to affect the outcome of the game. So I never really pay attention to it. Of course. Uh, but it's, it's of- always fun to, you know, get into some dialogue and talk to people about it. So it, that's always fun, no matter what school you went to. Yeah, I, I mean, I know you. I know you're going to mess around when your boots are actually Oh, for sure. Here. That's if it, anything. Man, that's all I'm going to do is mess around, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, when I ask you your game day schedule, it's basically just wake up, mess around, eventually go to bed <laughs> after messing around for a whole day. Yeah. <laughs> My game day schedule used to be wild, man. Like, you know, back in the day, I had so much energy. I was so young. It was like I could go to bed at 1 a.m. and wake up at 5 a.m. and do a whole workout. Like, nah, I wouldn't dare do anything like that, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm also not going to do that. But there was never a point in my life where I was. So that's the difference between you and I. <laughs> um, it was uh, it was National Signing Day this week. Speaking of, you know, yeah. like- kids game and, and younger version of yourself uh what do you remember most from the day you signed or the day you committed i mean did you do like the hat switch fake out or were you playing it straight at that point no i never was that type and matter of fact i never took any other visits other than penn state because i just wanted to let them know like hey i'm loyal to my decision um but i remember being up on the um, table with with all of my buddies, man, all of my guys that I did 6 a.m. workouts with that that we called ourselves. Like, it was nothing that the coach said. It was us getting up at 5 a.m. to go work out at 6. And uh, it, it was great, you know, being a part of that. And I remember putting my hat on and uh, just how proud my mom was of me, just seeing how much she sacrificed and, uh, every everything that she taught me, it just seemed like everything was coming to fruition at the time. And um, it was it, it was a great time, man. It was a great time in my life. You know, I didn't have to worry about bills. I didn't have to worry <laughs> about taxes. I didn't have to worry about none of that stuff, man. I just had to worry about books and ball. And that was it. And, um, you know, it, it, it was a great time for me. I still got the uh, the newspaper clipping of when we signed. I think it was eight of us who signed to a D1 school, which was like crazy at that time, you know, back in 1998 in Detroit. Or back in back in that time, Detroit high school football wasn't as big as it is now. But I do remember that day, man. It was, it was a great time for me. And would you say, ultimately, you, you honor that commitment, you go to Penn State. Did the experience meet your expectations? Did it match what you thought you were getting into? Oh, man, it blew me away. Blew me away. At the time, I thought everything was punishment because all the rules that you had, like you couldn't have any chin hair. You had to be punctual. And by punctual, that means if there's a a meeting at two o'clock, that means 144 for you. You know, like you had to follow those rules and you had to follow like eight rules and none of them had anything to do with football. So I'm like, man, what is this, man? Like, but they're preparing you for the real world because they know, like, if you got 120 players, you know, including the walk ons, that 120 players are not going to go to the NFL, but you are going to work somewhere out in the real world. So let's teach them how to be men out here. Like, I learned how to tie a tie at Penn State, I learned how to balance my checkbook at Penn State. And it was all because of my coaches. Um, you know, just just nudging me like, hey, man, you got to learn this, man. You got to understand this. Like we had to wear suits to away games. Like I don't know if a lot of colleges are doing that, but that's what we did. Awesome. Uh, I yeah, I, I can only I can only live vicariously through you. I'm, I'm always <laughs> here. I'm always interested to hear what that was like as someone who never came close. Um, oh, man, it was no joke, man. You had to be on top of it. And we were amateurs. We weren't pros. You know what I'm saying? So. Like for me to get a suit, like I had to call some of my uncles and stuff like that. Like all I got is workout gear, you know? So I had to, you know, call some of my uncles and cousins who worked at different stores. Like, hey man, you got some dress shoes there that I could buy, you know? So um, times were simpler back then. But then you do go on to the pros after that. You you do play for the Niners and Bears and and both of your pro teams are sort of on opposite ends of the spectrum right now. Like, yeah. are you uh, when you watch these Niners, are you thinking Super Bowl or bust if they stay healthy or, you know, do you think there's a team out there that can threaten them or is it kind of just a lock if 
if nope. all those starters are, are nope. in. If the Niners get hot, man, they're going all the way. If the Niners get hot and stay healthy, they're going all the way, man. Like, they just – it's too stacked, man. It's too stacked. Like, we got Kittle, Debo, then you pass it to – I mean, you you get a ball off the CMC. Ah, Purdy is – efficient out there man then our defense is really good so man we're Niners on the roll man they on the roll and then the Bears like not on a roll but they make a smart trade last year and they probably are going to end up with the number one pick this year mm -hmm. so uh, I mean Justin Fields rallied a little bit the last couple weeks but are you what are you eyeing there are you looking at a quarterback you're looking at Marvin Harrison Jr. to pair with Fields what are you thinking right now I don't I don't know what they're going to do. Um, and I think I said this the other day, if they're going to keep him, then go get Marvin Harrison, go get him some weapons that, you know, he could spread the ball around with. And um, if you're not going to keep him, then get whoever the, the top guy available is, you know, like, let's <sighs> let's 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 try to get to the playoffs and let's try to win the Super Bowl and let's do it now. Like, not let's not wait. Like, let's go after it now. Like, you got – the defense is doing great right now. They're doing great. I think they're number two in the league in interceptions right now. And, um, you know, you got to build off of that. And so now the the offense needs to catch up. So let's let's make them catch up, like, immediately. Let's, let's do what we need to do in this draft to make sure that we contenders. Got a couple more things I want to hit on that I feel like I have to ask. I see your shirt. You've got a, a creamy Bigham shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like we, we're we big fans of that character over here, obviously. And, <laughs> and I would love to know, like, what's the origin of that character for you? What does that character uh, think his origin story is? But how did it really come about? Well, this is a guy that you would see at the intramural building. And, um, you know, he's there every day. And, um, you know, he has no skills at all, but he doesn't he, – it's not from lack of confidence. Like, he's he's shooting a jumper like he's Steph Curry, and he's nowhere close to making the shot, but he's still going to shoot it. And um, you see this guy all the time, man, and sometimes you have to pick him because you only got nine players. And then it's just like, all right, man, you got to come on our team, man, just so we can get this run. But you see this guy all the time. He's stuck in a in a time zone. He's he's in the 70s or the 60s, and he just can't get out. And he just will not conform to whatever's going on today. And he's never wrong. Uh, and um, you know, you you see this guy all the time. And uh, that's that's basically Cream Biggs, man. You know, there's never a move that he sees that he hasn't done, or that he didn't or originate. So uh, that's that's basically that character that you see, Cream Biggles, man. You see him at every like every spot that has all the hoopers, he's there. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, you are literally co-hosting a podcast with with Shaq, one of the most yeah. skilled hoopers of all time. Like, what's it been like for you forging that relationship with someone who I assume like you grew up in the '90s? You're watching him, you know, when you're much younger, and now he's in your life in a totally different way. Well, I actually met Shaq at a Kellogg's event where he was my coach. Uh, we was like a celebrity basketball game, the Crunch Classic. And um, uh, he said, hey, man, one day we're going to work. And so I was like, OK, you know, I, I guess I, I thought it was one of those. I'm going to have my people talk to your people type of moment because, you know, Shaq and I are, are in the same fraternity. We're frat brothers. And so um, we see each other all the time in passing. But this time he was like, hey, man, I seen your videos, whatever. And we're, we're going to work. So I was like, OK. And so the next year came up, saw him again and said, hey, man, I didn't forget about you. And I was like, oh, OK. And next thing you know, I had some people calling me saying like, hey, this is going to be Shaq podcast. You're going to be on it with Michelle Turner or whatever. And I was like, oh, OK. Then it started happening. And so. Uh, Shaq is he's, he's a great guy man has a great heart and um, he does a lot of things that that aren't on camera on purpose you know what I'm saying just so like you know it could be uh, a, a time where like I'm really doing this from the bottom of my heart like you, it's nothing to see Shaq going to a Walmart and 
pay for somebody's bill and they have two uh, carts just full of groceries. Like he'll pay for it all. And that's just the type of person that he is. That's amazing. And amazing that he kept thinking of you. Um, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Um, well, I really appreciate you joining us, Spice. Uh, the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl coming up this week. You got a final score prediction for me before we go? Uh, I'm going to give it to Notre Dame. Notre Dame is going to win, um, I'll say, 28 to I'll say 17. Okay, great. 28-17 Notre Dame. That means Marcus Freeman gets the 2% milk bath. Uh, and hopefully he's able to <laughs> shake it off and get clean. Uh, thanks for joining me, man. Yeah, no problem, man. Anytime.